So I went to bed on Tuesday at about 10.30pm and for some reason I just couldn't get to sleep. I had this horrible headache, I'd taken some paracetamol, it just wasn't going away. So I probably laid there for like two hours and eventually fell asleep. But then, for some reason, I ended up waking up at 5.30am, still feeling a bit like rubbish, and my alarm wasn't going to go off for another one and a half hours because I had to get up then to be able to go to my meeting that I had later on that day. So I ended up having like four and something hours sleep with loads of limbo sleep in between, and I was not impressed. So feeling tired and generally kind of ill, I had a temperature and this headache was still persisting, I got ready for the day and we had football later on. It was going to be Textiles London versus the Barclays Accelerator people, and I don't play football. So it's gonna be quite exciting to have a friendly match to see if any of the sport I've been doing is actually paying off. So threw to the other my sports kit, threw in my t-shirt, my shorts and my trainers and whopped it on my shoulder and off to the bus I went. As I mentioned, I had a meeting, but I didn't fully know the location of the meeting. It was somewhere in central London, I think it was around Bank Station, and I couldn't get the location yesterday because for some reason the servers were just playing up and my phone decided to malfunction. I could not load Google Maps, I couldn't load anything in my browser, and I also couldn't load Apple Maps for what that's worth. So I couldn't figure out the exact station or the directions to which I was going to, or the address that I was going to. So I messaged my friend, this was quite early in the morning, so she wasn't up, about where the hell is it that we're going. So I got off the bus and got onto the tube in the hopes my friend would eventually reply, and I fell asleep. I decided that I would get some rest while I could, and that wasn't bad, that was fine, until I got about four stops in and I was like, hold on, a part of myself is missing. The part of myself that was missing was the sports bag that I packed earlier. I left it on the bus. My first reaction was like, Ugh. oh well, it's all replaceable, right? Except for this pair of trainers that I wore up Mount Fuji, I sort of a sentimental attachment to them because, well, I climbed the freaking mountain with them, but nonetheless, wasn't too much of a big deal. So I eventually got off at the appropriate station and I surfaced at Bank. I surfaced at Bank. From the Northern Line. This is a problem. This is a problem because surfacing from Bank at rush hour is a horrible experience. There's so many people rushing past you and you're quite low down, so there are so many escalators you have to go through, and I'm in a rush, so I'm taking two steps at a time up this escalator. I am urban hiking all over the place, and I eventually service. Bear in mind, I'm still ill, and I am knackered, and now I'm physically tired, and I'm just like, oh, jeez. So, phone my friend, and I asked the directions. Turns out I'm sort of farish, well, I'm 10 minutes away by bus 2B, and my phone is still not working, I can't load any data, so she kind of gives me phone direct, we're doing this offline now. It was really weird and it worked out, though in the end I had to go to Allgate East. So after all that hullabaloo, I found the place, but I was 30 minutes late. The reason that that is, was kind of bad was because this is the first impression that the CEO was going to get of me and I was pitching, I was pitching an idea to them and if they liked it, they were going to incorporate it into their loyalty scheme and we were going to be the silver bullet that they needed to take their profits through the roof. In my head I was a bit like, eh, be fine, I'm a pretty casual guy. And it was fine, turns out it went well. I said stuff after the rush and we concluded the meeting, the, the startup that I was helping out, they were fine with it, the CEO pretty impressed, the analytics guy, very cool, got some water, and then we went to leave and I'll just show you, I'll show you what happened when I tried to leave. There you go, look at that. That's what happened when I went to leave. I cracked my screen. <sighs> Being me, I was a bit like, eh, it's just a material object. I can replace that, it's kind of annoying. It still functions though, just doesn't look as pretty. It's not like I can't replace it. It's not like my sister. So, carried on with the day. Bear in mind that this, <laughs> so I've been up since about 5.30, if you count limbo time. And it was only like 11 a.m. That was it, that was my day thus far, 11 a.m. All of this stuff had happened in 11 a.m. And I was like, can things get any worse? Things got slightly worse. I got to work and my temperature went up even more and I was really tired, so I ended up having to go home. Um, so that wasn't very nice. And also, I phoned my bank because my phone's insured. So it was like, oh, wicked, that's good. Um, I can just claim this on the insurance and have it all sorted. Nope. <laughs> so this moment in time, I was ill, I was really tired, I had lost my sports kit due to my own foolishness, um, and my phone had cracked, and I have no idea how this really important meeting went that I was actually late to. 
that was my Wednesday. Thursday? Do you want to hear about Thursday? Thursday? Phone the bus stop, turns out they found my sports kit and I collected it that day and all my stuff was in there. With the bank, I complained to the financial ombudsman about them and they gave me £50 to get my screen replaced, so that was fine and I didn't need the insurance. Got feedback from the CEO guy, turns out love the pitch, love the idea and we're going to be implementing it next week. And after a hell of a lot of sleep, I now feel fine. Um, so health is now good. And what is the point of my little story? For those of you unawares, last week and the week before that was exam results for A-levels and for GCSEs here in the UK. The point of me telling you this story is, depending on how that day went and what was inside of that envelope, that may have been a good day, it may have been a bad day, and if it was a bad day, what I wanted to highlight was that we all have bad days, but in time, things work themselves out. So whether you think I should congratulate you or commiserate you, what I'm trying to say is, regardless, you decide whether or not the thing works out or not. How you approach these situations in life, the attitude that you put toward them, that can really shape how the outcome's going to be. If I had really lost my call cool on that meeting when my phone smashed, the meeting might have not gone so well because I may have been there crying and screaming and cussing the concrete floor in my own stupidity, but I didn't do that, I kept my cool and I persevered and made sure that I made the meeting as early as possible, apologised and, well, that went pretty good. Though that doesn't completely translate over to exam results, my advice there would be accept what reality is and think about what your next step is going to be. Because in life what is guaranteed is that time will constantly move forward and you have to move with it. There is very little point in dwelling on the past and it is the future in this present moment that we exist within, so trying to change the past isn't really going to help. Obviously, if you want to reset exams, if something particularly annoying, feel free to do that. I'm going to tell you not to, but just remember, it's not the end of the world. Speaking of the end of the world, my world will end in like six weeks, I think. That is when the accelerator will come to a close. And I said six weeks before, but it's because we've got two presentation days. One presentation day is internal and one of them is external. So the actual day in which it ends is the 30th of September. Um, so I'm sort of not very clear on how many weeks that actually is. And I can't be bothered to do the maths right now. But yeah, I'm currently trying to figure out what I'm going to do afterwards. I'm not worried, things will figure themselves out. I'll eventually end up doing exactly what is perfect for me because I'll give it loads of thought and I'll eventually discover even if what I start to do isn't exactly what I wanted to do, I would have ruled that out. So for anyone else trying to figure out what they want to do, try something, if it doesn't work, try something else. Thank you for watching this Lacking in Wisdom and Anecdotal vlog for this Sunday. If you would like to share any of your stories of chaos or misery that you have had in recent weeks or years or generations, <laughs> please do post them down in the comments below. Or if you would like, please do share any of your celebratory moments because they are equally cool and be nice to hear them, right? And share in your joy. I am playing with a piece of blue tack and I will see you on Sunday, subscribers. Actually, before I go, so I've been replying to loads of your comments and loads of your private messages you sent me. If you haven't enabled your Google Plus settings, I hate Google Plus, I'm sorry, uh, you guys have to use it. Um, if you haven't enabled your Google Plus settings for me to be able to reply to you in the comments, I won't be able to reply to you in the comments. I've tried. If I've just plus one your post and not given you a reply, that's me saying, I acknowledge what you're saying, but I can't reply or say anything back because you won't let me because of your settings. If you'd like a reply, you just change that. And everyone who said they wanted to be a top fan, I've added you to my little top fan list. So thanks for wanting to be a part of that. Okay, cool. I'm done now. Right. You may get on with your day.